Bob Rigdon with Preserving Dallas History through Melter Detector. And on today's video, I would like to share with you how I was able to go back and actually locate the correct site of a historical uh, site called the New Century Cotton Mill in Dallas, Texas. What makes this site so unique is not just because it was an experiment per se, but it was actually owned and operated by African Americans. Joseph Wiley and his wife deeded the original four acres for this facility, uh, which opened its doors in 1901 uh, and closed their doors in 1905. The mill itself uh, employed as many as 100 African Americans at its peak. The mill was a byproduct of people's thinking of such a project during the Tricentennial Colored Expo, which was staged by African Americans in the once known North Dallas Freeman town in the earlier part of 1901 during its week of uh, operation. The cotton mill itself had a lot of black and white uh, businessmen as backers. The most famous of the backers, however, were the well-known department store owners, the Singer Brothers. The mill itself had a very short run of only four years, but like most other old sites, when it closed its doors, it left behind a lot of artifacts to be recovered and preserved for future generations. Now for the artifacts. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a Sanborn fire insurance map. And as you can see, it has very good details of all the buildings that was actually situated on this four acres, which sits below the Central Expressway today. It was at the base of Flora and Juliet Street. This is a copy of the 1901 deed for the New Century Cotton Mill in which Joseph Wiley and his wife deeded the four acres for the future site. And although I don't know of any existing pictures of the cotton mill itself, this is a 1901 Dallas Morning News paper sketch that was published during the fair. I wish I had a photo. This is how the site of the former cotton mill looks today in 2021 as it sits below Central Expressway. It is now just a green space. A lot of erosion. And this is just an example of how the old city of Dallas plat book maps look. And the artifacts themselves, as you can see, old types of machinery parts and horseshoes and old silverware, a very old knife, just about to integrate. And you notice these are different types or styles of horseshoes. I always find horseshoes and I keep them all. I have probably well over a hundred horseshoes.
And moving on along, the old coins, although some of the coins are more modern, you have to keep in mind that after the uh, cotton mill itself was demolished, a real estate uh, office was on the site. I'm not sure how many years, but I have found uh, that information on uh, newer Sanborn fire insurance maps. And if I check the city directors, I'm sure I can come up with better dates. But as you can see, you have Indian head pennies, wheat pennies. You have uh, uh, 1854 and 57 dime and half dimes. V nickels. And of course, my pride and joy, the 1901 half dollar barber. Miscellaneous hardware. Old door mechanism, gun parts, shotgun shells, buckles, and one of my favorites, the Los Angeles Rubber Stamp Company. They date from 1900 to about 1910. Old pieces of china wire. I'm sure there's a lot more to be found. And of course, what would an old site be like without the very old oyster shells? Dishes, mason jaw lid, women's makeup container, little old saucer, miscellaneous, I have no idea what that is. And of course, you're always going to find, if not whole bottles, broken neck bottles. And these are very nice ones. And the insulators here have their own type of story. These insulate, insulators, especially this tubular one here, or ceramic, and were put in use beginning in the year 1880 through the 1930s. They were for wire to be threaded through, electrical wire. And the strange looking long rusted piece of iron here is what was once used as a window weight. It weighs about six pounds. You had to have those in the old days before you came out to modern type window tracks. Give you a good close ups. And the dimes, the one half dime here has a hole and it was always believed that former slaves had holes in the coins so they could wear them around their ankles, which could be true. I found quite a few coins over the years that were over 100 years old and had holes in them. The little cute bottles were buried along with trash. Please keep in mind that in an operation of this size that was taken on by these African Americans for the first time, there were definitely uh, a lot of roadblocks. 
uh, I have traced, uh, uh, on paperwork I have traced, that is, where the mill was actually purchasing or trying to purchase all of the different types of equipment that was necessary to run the mill. And like I stated earlier, at one point, uh, they had 88 to 100 mainly African Americans employed. I have actually traced Joseph Wiley and his wife uh, to another state, I believe it was Ohio or Indiana, where he took on a job of managing a cotton mill in that state before his death. And like the businesses of today, politics play a part in the demise of the new century cotton mill. And sadly, as aside from the written articles on this historic uh, cotton mill, there is no marker today that uh, will show its place in Dallas history. Sad, very sad. Well, hope you enjoyed this short a very informative video and please subscribe and like they say in the movie business that's a wrap to the next time thanks for watching